Be blessed as you watch the ministration of God's servant, Pastor Moraki Olumodimu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give Jesus all the praise. And one more time, I think we should thank God for the mercy that he has shown to our brethren. All the people gave testimonies, the healings, the deliverances, the divine interventions. You know, those are nothing but the hand of the almighty God. Let's lift our hands to heaven and just say, Father, thank you. Let's thank him for the move of his spirit in our midst, in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and just say, Father, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can't thank you enough. We are just here to say thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us, for all that you are doing in us, and for all that you are doing through us. We are grateful. Thank you. We bless your holy name. What a mighty, gracious, merciful, powerful God you are. Please accept us and accept our worship. hallelujah thank you the other voice was our father and the lord's voice so thank you for giving me back my voice i want to say a very big thank you to our father and mother uh pastor and pastor mrs omotosha for the privilege of worshiping with us this morning uh i walk directly with pastor Kuli. he's not just our father and the lord he's also my direct boss and he asked me to uh, be at the house this morning and it's a privilege that we will not abuse we thank them so very much and we pray grace will be on a mighty increase over them in jesus name and thank you pastor and thanks to all the leadership for the warmth the love and the support the lord bless you real good in jesus name and if you are born again you are a vip because one day you will walk on the street of gold so please put your hands together for yourself and you may please have your seats the lord bless you i turn with us to hacks of the apostles chapter 14 i read from verse 8 all the way to verse 10 and for a title i will just share on what i call faith to be healed faith to be healed there is usually a connection between the power of god and the faith capacity of his people God seemed always to love to move when men decide to release their faith to connect with God's grace and God's power. So today I'll be reasoning with us from the word of God on faith to be healed. How you unleash your faith to connect with that which the grace of God has provided. And for a story and for an anchor to what we'll be discussing, I read from acts 14 from verse 8 it says and there sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked verse 9 the same heard paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and he walked let's just stop there for a moment now i believe god very strongly that whatever might be important in our life whatever might be weak whatever could be mobile whatever represents stagnation in our lives this morning by the hand of the lord strength will come upon us and our levels will change in the name of jesus christ just as the lord healed that man that was sitting uh down there at the city of lystra god in mercy will reach out to us and heal us all in the name of jesus christ now I'll say uh, uh, three things very quickly about that man the first thing you see about that man is that the man had a fixed position he had a fixed position the bible says in verse 8 that the, the man was impotent in his feet and being crippled from his mother's womb he never walked so he had a fixed position 
and you know he sat probably begging and because he was negatively circumstanced from the womb perhaps is a, a problem had made it very difficult for him to be an effective member of the society and you know sometimes that people have, have experienced all manner of prejudices because of, it, of their physiological or mental situation or emotional situation. And so we see that this man had a fixed problem. It was described by his problem. If there was something that was most prominent and defined in his life. That had to be the fact that he had never walked. So he had a fixed problem. He was not only physically challenged. I believe that he was also socially challenged. He had to depend on people perhaps. He was economically challenged. And because he couldn't walk, he couldn't, you know, because he couldn't walk, he couldn't walk. And so he had to depend on people. I believe the man was also psychologically challenged. You know what it means? when you see other people who could do what you cannot do not because you don't want to do them but because you are not endowed so to speak to do them so you see this man that he had a fixed problem and his problem made him to be to be dependent on people he had to economically depend on people he had to uh, beg as it were he had he was psychologically challenged and he had problems on different levels of human existence that is the first thing that you see about this man and you know the interesting thing is that this man was in the, a particular city called Lystra now Lystra means expression he was in the city of expression but he couldn't express himself he was in a city the meaning of Lystra Lystra means expression Lystra means freedom Lystra means mobility Lystra actually means progress so the man was in the city of liberation in the city of progress in the city of social mobility in the place of increase in the city of beauty but alas his life was diametrically opposed to the reality of the city are there not people who are in the United States, the land of opportunities? Are there not people who are in uh, New York City, the capital of the world, so to speak, with regards to finance and economy? And you see, and yet they cannot find their own expression. Are there not people whose uh, situation are dramatically opposed to their potential? Are there not people who carry potentials, but yet those potentials lack expression because of the issues? in their life so we see that this man was in the middle of opportunities he was in the place of expression he was in the place of grace but yet everything in his life was opposite to what he had seen so what he was telling me his situation sometime he came into this country without papers and uh, he was asked to speak to another Nigerian who had become very successful. So he spoke with this person just to say, hey, I just came here not too long ago. I used to be um, a director with the company I was working with in Nigeria. But policy changed and I had to come over here. That man was working with one of the telecommunication companies in Nigeria and he had risen. He had done well for himself. And he was one of those people, very few people that I know, came into this country and came with about 800,000 US dollars. So he didn't come as a poor man. He came as a very fulfilled man. He had houses in different places in Lagos. He had houses in Abuja. He was very successful. But for some reasons, he had to run for his life and come over to the US to become, you know, um, a better person. He had to come over and have, uh, you know, some understanding with his family. So he came over. And when he got here and he tried everything he could, tried to go into real estate, everything failed, tried to do everything he could, and yet he became unsuccessful. So somebody told him, I said, you see, let me introduce you to somebody who could help you. So they introduced him to the man, uh, another Nigerian, very successful. And the man looked at him and said, oh, my brother, you are in the U.S., but you don't have papers. He said, your situation is like somebody who came to a buffet. And he had different types of food in front of him, but his hands are tied. He said, that is who you are. The man said, ah. I came to this man to encourage me. He just gave me a description of my life. You know, sometimes people can become very successful and they don't know how to talk. 
<laughs> and they just open their mouth carelessly. Sometimes those that God have helped, think of those who are yet to receive help as lazy and confused people. So I looked at that brother and said to him, I said, actually your life is like somebody who is in, who is in a place of opportunity but cannot take uh, advantage of those opportunities because his hands had been tied. So the man looked at him and said, thank you very much. He said from that day, he never spoke to that man. But alas, that is the truth of some people. That is the situation actually. For some people, they're in the midst of opportunities, but they don't have the wherewithal. They don't have what it takes to tap into those opportunities and make the best of their life. If by any reason, that is your description. I speak today as somebody who has received grace to speak. That parable will never be used for you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hand that has been tied, God will unloose this morning. Oh, your amen needs some vitamins. I said, God, we will lose every hand that has been tied. Every limitation in your life shall be over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And by the time I met that man again, he said to me, he said, somebody told me years ago that my hands were tied. He said, but I thank God that my hands are loose right now. He said, I'm not, I'm not just a, a green card holder. I'm now a citizen. I have houses in Baltimore. I built my house from the scratch. And if you see this man, he, he has a problem with cars. He's one of those people who like good cars. How many of you like good cars? Let me see your hand. Uh, you are one of us. Thank God for you. <laughs> so when every time he changes his guard, you know, and he and he's, and, and he likes cars, and he just bought, uh, you know, he just bought a, a, a plate or whatever it was, Tesla, and he brought it and said, you know, Pastor, come and see this car. Come and see this car. I said, thank God your hand has been loosed. And there was some there was uh, some days back, some years back, they said you couldn't do anything with your life. I speak to somebody by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, the God who changes time and season, that same God will change your story. Oh, come on. I say we change your season. You might be in the season of lack and despondency, but by the mercy of God, your season will change. Oh, come on. I say your season will change. Maybe you are shut in. You can't go out. You can't go in and out at this time. I speak to you as somebody who has received grace to speak. Very soon, your season will change. You will go in and out and you will find pasture. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, lift up your hands to heaven. Say, Father. Oh, lift it high like thunder. Say, Father, let my season change. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Let my season change in the name of Jesus. Let my season change in the name of Jesus. Oh God that changes times and seasons. Let our seasons change in the name of Jesus. Oh come on lift up your voice. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Lift up your voice. Lord you change time and seasons. Let my seasons change for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every handicap in my life be over. Let every handicap in our church be over. Let every handicap in our in our marriages be over. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, bring me to the city of expression. Bring me to seasons of expression. Yes, let the grace in my life be expressed. Let the capacity in my life be expressed. Let the blessing in my life be expressed. Let the glory in my life be expressed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I shall not be shut down. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to come into expression. Let the vision that I carry, let it be expressed in the name of Jesus. Let the destiny that I carry, let it be expressed. Let the beauty that I carry, let it be expressed. Let the majesty that I carry, let it be expressed. Whatever is tying down my hand, whatever is tying down my progress, this money I lose myself from them. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is time for expression. In the name of Jesus, it is time for expression. It is time for expression. Let my life find expression. Let the beauty of God in my life, let the grace of God in my life find expression. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody say it's time for expression. Oh, come on, say it's time for expression. 
slap three people high five around you and say in the name of Jesus it is time for expression in the name of Jesus we are not just sitting down we are expressing the glory of God we are expressing the honor of God we are expressing destiny in the name of Jesus my destiny is finding expression in this season come on come on prophesy say my destiny is finding expression in the name of Jesus Christ it is time for God's expression in my life have your seats one minute so the man was was tied down by an impotency but he was in the city called expression he couldn't express himself the second thing you see about that man is that he had a fixed posture number one he had a fixed position number two the bible says that he had a fixed a posture the man was important in his feet he had what I call a foundational problem the trouble in his life started before his birth the Bible says he was lame from his mother's womb so it wasn't just a biological happenstance when he came out that led to his impotency now you see somebody that was disadvantaged from the very beginning before the race began he had lost the race he had no reasons whatsoever no pedestal for competition he had nothing to compete with you know before the race started he was already so to speak in a very negative position he had to bear with the problems that he didn't create he didn't choose to be lame it wasn't him who's, who decided to be lame it was never his choice are there people today come out of your bibles and come to the author who are facing problems that they never chose they had to carry a cross they did not design they are made to bear a cross they did not choose they have to face a life they did not choose maybe you came from a family that naturally predisposes you to failure so to speak and it was not your own making you didn't negotiate your destiny but you just found out that that is your reality somehow you didn't make that problem to happen you were born with it it has become your life it has become your experience it has become a cross that you have to carry there are things like that and there are times like that that you and i we have to face things that we were never that we had never uh, chosen things that we never had a, 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 a reason to choose foundational issues foundational issues a lot of the things that we are grappling with actually there are things that are beyond us there are there, there are things that really they are beyond us they were never our making but yet there are things that we have to overcome to be able to move to the next level now listen to this church everyone i love the choir they sing very well they are powerful people please everybody on the choir stand can you come uh, please let's preach together this morning come let me use let me let me use them please put your hands together for them and let me illustrate some things to you about about how somehow our foundation could be a problem it could be a reason it could be the the force or it could be the, the the things that fuel some of the crisis in our lives and don't don't worry just just see this illustration now see these wonderful brethren thank god for their lives now the that the four of them they are on the same level they are they are they are equal they are on the same level they are standing in the same place if you don't mind can you come to this side let's let's do this quickly now uh my sister my brother just uh let's do it one male one oh where are the men okay who is the brother that we volunteer huh let somebody volunteer i need a brother thank you sir the lord bless you please put your hands together for him thank you thank you thank you thank you i will ask you to go back thank you god bless you let's put our hands together for her now a brother and a sister now let's assume that these brethren they have to start the journey of life the competition of life together you know and somehow they are on the same level let's assume be parallel let's be on the same level now let's assume that they are starting life together the four of them okay but you see this guy and this sister they 
They were born in the United States. Step forward, one step. And these guys were born where there is Boko Haram. Now, they already have at least a step forward. Now, these guys, parents, are educated. Okay? And they have done some things for themselves. So, they have a good parentage. Now, everything is for uh, hypothetical recklessness. So, that's not their reality. But just get, it, just get the gist. Now, because they came from a family that has some education some exposure some social capabilities you know that naturally give them another step forward so step forward now these guys parents they are born again they know the lord they have a relationship with god okay that gives them in the journey of life and in the competition of life that gives them an advantage there are times that what gives you an advantage is the fact that you have a praying parent. That in itself is an advantage. So step forward. Now God forbid, say God forbid. They are already the Boko Haram state. But too bad. They have no social standing. So go backward one step. No education. Go back another step. No relationship with God. Their parents are idolaters. Go back one step. Now this is destiny. Please come. Yeah, come. No. Yeah. The person just came from, you know the place. This is destiny. This is where they are going to. Now see the gap between these folks just because of certain things that are in their foundation. That is not their making. But just their reality. Now these guys, again, maybe, let's assume, they are white. So that gives them another advantage. Step forward again. And these people from Boko Haram State, they just came. And they have to compete with these guys to get to the destiny. Was it their making? Did they choose to be? Is that their reality? That's how, that's how life is. Now, follow me very carefully. The Bible says that that man was born lame. Now, all the factors that we are described here is a form of lameness. But see that the man had a fixed situation, a fixed posture, but he had something that was different. And that was the third, that's the third point I want to mention. The Idma had a very dynamic faith. And because he had faith to be healed, see that scripture. That, please give that scripture back to me. Thank you. Now, now verse 9 said, The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. And because he had faith to be healed, what faith does is to alter your situation. What faith does is to go to your foundation and make your foundation irrelevant to your future. 
Oh dear, 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 dear. What faith does, listen, what faith does to you when you have the faith to be healed from your circumstances notwithstanding? What faith does is that faith alters the reality of your background and takes you from the it takes you from the back and makes you to overcome. That's what faith does. You see, they said America is a leveler. But I found out that actually, when it comes to the race and competition of life, faith is also a leveler. When there is faith, it makes the realities of your background inconsequential to the potentials of your future. Faith changes the dynamics. Faith brings you to a platform of advantage. Now, you may be in Lystra and be important. That is not the problem. You may be in the city of expression and have no expressions. That is not the problem. You may be in the problem in the, in the state where you are completely disadvantaged, but there is something that changes the equation. And that's when you have faith to be healed. And because that man had faith to be healed, he took him from the position of being disadvantaged and placed him back in the race. And as a matter of fact, faith can make you to overcome. Huh? By faith, we leap over the wall. It is by faith that we break through every limitation in our life. When we lay hold on the spirit of faith, you know what happens? Then we lose respect to anything in our background. Your background is not the reason why your back must be on the ground. When you lay hold on the spirit of faith. The faith... That he laid hold on, made him to be healed. And we see, and you know one thing is this. These brethren that were coming from that place of lameless, you see how they overtook. But you know what? And what is the issue with the people that started out first? Who had an advantage? Huh? Have they failed? They have not failed. If they too, we walk in faith. So the Bible says, God does not respect our persons. Is a respecter of faith. He's, he's the God of the rich. He's the hope of the poor. He's the God of the Gentiles. And he's the God of the Jews. Anybody who has faith. Whether he's a white man. Or a black man. Or a yellow man. Or a green man. In the competition of life. What, it, what happens to him is that. He's enlisted and positioned. To finish well. It is by faith that we overcome the handicap of our background. By faith. And that's what changes the whole thing. And so if these brethren too will walk in faith. So walk with me. Huh? If they walk in faith, what will happen? All of us will get to our destination. Put your hands together for them. Welcome daddy and mommy. In Jesus name. Now, that's what faith does to us. The man was in Lystra. He was important from his womb. He didn't choose his situation. But he had faith to be healed. Ah, I'm praying this morning that faith will arise in your heart. I'm praying this morning that faith will arise so much in your heart as to alter everything that has been negative in your life. It is by faith that we negotiate our destiny upon the earth. It is by the spirit of faith that we negotiate our portion. It is faith that makes us to bring our matter to the judicial court of the Elohim. It is by faith that somebody like Jabesh, whose mother named Sorrow, was able to alter his reality from a child of sorrow to the child of blessing. Why? Because he appealed by faith. To the court of God. Now what is your situation. My brother. 
what is really your situation. Don't limit everything just to the fact of, okay, that's what I was born with. Or that's my predisposition. I was predisposed naturally to fail. I show you those who out of weakness were strong. Those who, who out of position of disadvantage became mighty upon the earth. I show you Jephthah. Those who were caught bastards. Those who were, who's, who, who were born of, uh, uh, from a harlot. And whose father actually patronized harlots. Those who came from dysfunctional families and dysfunctional foundations. But by the spirit of faith, they pressed beyond their handicaps to become a vessel in the hand of the Lord. That's what faith does to us. And when the Bible says he had faith to be healed, it was faith not just to heal a diseased body. It was faith to heal any maladies in life. And that's what faith does. Oh, that's what faith does. There is nothing that faith cannot alter if you put your faith down for a change. Is somebody getting my passing across you? Is somebody understanding my passing across you? My mouth be enlarged in righteousness to say to you that for your sake, heaven is changing the rules. Oh, come on, your amen is standing on one leg. I said, for your sake, the rules are changing. Oh, come on, I said, the rules are changing. Faith is bringing it to your advantage. Somebody is here. As you go this week, for your sake, they will change the rules. Somebody has applied three times. But I want to say to you by God, that for your sake, they will now change the rules. Oh dear, somebody has failed several times and it's not in the place of your advantage. Your background has made you to be disadvantaged. But I speak as one who has received grace to speak. For your sake, they will change the rules. 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 Ah, I said they will change the rules. Every rule that is against your going forward. Every rule that is against your mobility. Every rule that is against your advantage. Every rule that will frustrate your capacity. By the hand of God. By he that changes time and season. Let those rules change now in the name of Jesus. Ah, let those rules change in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has failed it at all. Maketa zukarush takatilia, ipra mazakata laba shapo, jebra masakale kete nakabradia shata. Let my mouth be enlarged in righteousness to declare to you in the name of Jesus. Whatever was working against you is working for you now in the name of Jesus Christ. As he spoke, because where faith is operational, mercy become outpoured. There is an outpouring of mercy in the place of faith. Okay? That is a capacity to overcome every limbless and every kinds of immobility where faith is applied. Listen to this. Go and try again. Go and try it again. Oh, come I have an understanding to say to somebody, go and try this time again. You have done high, listen, you have done IVF one, two, three times. Go and try again. Go and try it again. Go and do it again. Don't say because it hasn't brought out positive results that you are going to shut down. If somebody gets you and passing across, if your faith will say yes, God will not say no. It is well with you. The Lord keep and bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you his peace. The Lord give you rest on every side. The Lord make mercy to answer for you. The Lord bless and prosper you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak this day as somebody who has received grace to speak. Whatever is the handicap in your foundation, whatever is the handicap in your family, whatever has naturally designed you and programmed you for failure, by the hand of God and by the spirit of faith, we nullify them in the name of Jesus Christ. Faith does not deny the existence of a problem. Faith does not deny it. Faith defies it. 
what faith does is to defy the realities what faith does is to defy to see it at the face and um, and look at it and defy it and say obstacles notwithstanding i am going forward limitations notwithstanding i'm going forward today i receive for this house a baptism of the spirit of faith let your faith come alive in the name of jesus christ it is well with you you will testify in jesus mighty name we pray thank you daddy if you've been blessed by this ministration, we'd love to hear from you. Kindly connect with us on the following social media platforms on your screen.